This video is about the Whiskey Tribe distillery launch party that happened really quite recently, but it's also about something else that I think is really cool. This has been a good whiskey year for me. I've been invited to a couple of really cool events and had some, some nice invitations to do some whiskey things that normally I wouldn't get a chance to do if it wasn't for this YouTube thing, I think. And a couple of months ago, I had an invitation from Daniel Whittington at the Whiskey Vault asking me if I'd like to join them for their distillery opening at the end of August. And of course, I said yes immediately. I just had to work out how I was going to get there. I was really excited to go and I was excited for a few reasons. One of the reasons was, of course, it was going to be my first time in that part of the States, the first time in Texas. But then I discovered that there were other YouTube channels going and I discovered that Scott and Bart from the Scotch Test Dummies were going to be there, Bill from Whiskey Dictionary and Chad and Sarah from It's Bourbon Night as well. So that was making it exceptionally exciting for me to meet other channels as well. But also I started to realise over time that this was not kind of like a normal whiskey event. Yes, it was going to be a big event and a big deal, but it was very specific to the YouTube environment. So let me explain why I'm excited about that. My whiskey life is divided up into two separate worlds and, and they're really quite distinct and isolated from each other. The first one is a very virtual world, something that I consume and share through through a screen, through video, through social media channels and, and, and websites and blog sites, and of course through YouTube. It's, it's a very virtual thing. It's very cool, and we've never lived in a better time to do that and have all that information at hand, but it is very digital and through a screen. And then there's this other kind of whiskey world that's that's the real world, you know, it's it's the human realm where where there are whiskey events and festivals and tastings and club meetings and getting together in a house or in a bar to share whiskey with friends. And there's very little overlap between those two worlds, actually. Um, only if you kind of meet someone online and um, manage to hook up with them in a bar or something or if you meet somebody in the real world and attract them to your YouTube channel but really there's not much of an overlap there. But this event was going to change that for me. The reason I was excited about this event is I felt like it was going to be kind of an event that would bring together that kind of virtual world, that, that, that YouTube community, that digital community if you like and then bring it into a real world event, bring everybody together in the real world and kind of smash those two worlds together just to see what that might be like. And of course, that's exactly what happened. Everybody that, that kind of attended this event, everybody, whether they were organizing it, whether they were part of the distilleries, whether they were part of the YouTube channels or the, the masses of the whiskey tribe that turned up, they were all there essentially because of something that was born out of YouTube, which is super interesting for me.
So the Whiskey Vault started uh, back in 2016, I think, and then over the course of 2017 just grew like a weed. It was just crazy how fast it grew. And then in October last year, they were able to spawn another channel that was going to cover, um, you know, kind of whiskey topics, whiskey concepts, whiskey ideas, as well as document the building of their, their distillery there at the, at the Wizard Academy in Austin. And what they were doing with these episodes is that they were wrapping it inside a story, a kind of whimsical um, story of fun and entertainment and kind of tongue-in-cheek humour and things like that that made it just much more interesting to watch that kind of content. And that was very successful as well. And from that, we have the concepts like the Whiskey Tribe and the Magnificent Bastards and, and things like that. A whole kind of culture and community building inside YouTube around that specific channel and the sister channel, the Whiskey Vault. And the size of these channels is they're really an inspiration to anybody who creates on YouTube, especially the whiskey community on YouTube, because it shows that the appetite is out there for whiskey content and the community is there. And if you bring content that's valuable enough, people will come and watch it. And we're only just starting to get a glimpse of how big the, what the whiskey community actually is. One of the interesting dynamics about all of this is the idea that we are creating our content with video. And what that does, different from maybe a blog site or different from a social media feed or, or even Instagram or anything, what that does is that, especially for the people that are putting themselves on camera, um, it kind of, it, it strips away some of the, the strangeness or the isolation and it lets the people watching, it lets the people who consume that content have a level of familiarity. They get to understand the person presenting the content. So they can start to feel like they get to know the person presenting the content. And I certainly felt that when I was watching the Scotch Test Dummies, for example. So it was really, really exciting for me to be able to meet them in Austin and then try and imagine, is it, going to, is it going to feel strange when I meet them? Is it going to feel different from what they're like online? Anyway, I was very fortunate that Scott and Bart swung around Austin Airport and um, in their Scotch Test Dummies Uber, they collected me. And there was an example straight away. As soon as I walked up to them, handshakes, hugs, very, very comfortable. Just, we commented on the, the it was kind of bizarre kind of hearing our voices, I suppose, in the same shared space and seeing each other in the flesh kind of thing. But there was, a, there was definitely a familiarity there. There was a comfort there because of how much time we'd spent probably watching each other's content, hanging out with each other on these kind of virtual videos and things. So yes, the familiarity was already there. And I was curious to see if that familiarity would exist at the event as well. Anyway, we shot back to the hotel. We managed to put out a live stream before we went off for dinner that night. And it was a fairly quiet affair on the Thursday night, just getting settled in. On the Friday morning, we got up and we went back to the airport to collect Bill from the Whiskey Dictionary. And again, the exact same thing. It was Bill. We'd never met him before, but, but he was Bill. He was the same Bill. And it was just, again, that kind of comfortable and natural. So after we picked up Bill in the car, we did what Americans do when they travel state to state, apparently, and that's do a little whiskey shopping. Then after that, we went off to the distillery, we went off to the, to the whiskey academy itself to see the layout of the place and to see what it was like. And it's really quite a fantastic place to see. It was, it was again, the familiarity was there. Everything that you saw there, you'd seen on video, but when you're in that kind of 3D space, you start to feel the scale of the place and the, what the environment is actually like. And... It was a really cool place to go and visit. The first thing we did is we walked up to the distillery and we walked inside the distillery and it was Emma there that welcomed us. Now, Emma didn't know who we were, but we knew who Emma was. So probably we were all kind of very familiar with Emma. We were just like, hey, Emma, how are you? And things. And she's like, fine. But again, we felt like we already knew her because we'd seen her on so many videos and things. And she was super welcoming and gracious and what a fantastic person to have as a distillery manager and to have in that role of being able to welcome people like that as well. She was fantastic. And we got to hang out there at the distillery a little while and, and uh, sip some, some nice samples of Eleanor. This is Eleanor Whiskey. This is the first release from, from those guys. This is under the Crowded Barrel name. And this um, bottling is a cask strength 57. This particular one, this is chapter three, which is the 1860. This is at 57.3% ABV, so cask strength. 
And I was really surprised how delicious this was because it's very young whiskey, sourced from MGP, then with a little bit of time in Texas for that extra maturation there. And this was very, very good. And I was immediately struck by how good young whiskey could be matured in that environment. And in that environment, sipping this style of whiskey made perfect sense to me. So this Eleanor was really delicious. I tried a couple of them, but I was glad that the one I'd reserved in advance was the 1860, and I'm glad that that's the one I've brought home. Anyway, after we left Emma at the distillery, we went back to get some lunch in Austin itself, and we went to a place called Franklin for some barbecue because it was recommended, and the place was queued out. Literally, people take deck chairs, fold away chairs, so that they can arrive there at 7 a.m. in the morning in order to eat lunch there. It's crazy. I mean, stuff that just would never happen here. Um, so we ended up having to make other arrangements for lunch and we found a Mexican place, which was really cool. And then after that, we went on to the first kind of community-based event. And that was a semi-secret tasting hosted by Brad, who is uh, one of the Whiskey Tribe demigods. And that they'd found this really cool little kind of bohemian-style venue, this kind of little uh, welcoming room with a, with a back room with stairs up to a, a little seating area and an attic space and things. It was a really cool little space to hang out together. And, and lots of them had brought a selection of whiskies. Now, these whiskies were fantastic whiskies that you couldn't normally find. Um, you know, a, a really broad mix of world whiskies, scotch, American whiskies, everything was there. Fantastic stuff. And everybody was just able to, to try anything they wanted, to share it, discuss it. But immediately on arrival, we felt that exact same thing happening again, that most of the people there knew who we were, which was very, very cool. So there was a, that, that comfort of just coming up and just immediately picking up and chatting about things. And it all felt absolutely natural and comfortable. Now here we got to meet lots of people, we got to meet Josh, and we got to meet Terry, we got to meet James, we got to meet Brad of course. We got to meet lots of people that are involved, and I apologise if I don't remember all your names. I even got to meet patrons, like, like Brad of course, who's a patron of mine, and, and Jason Unsworth was there, and people who patron my channel. And to be in that same space with them, despite living in an entirely different continent from them, that, that was just a really cool opportunity. And Chad and Sarah from It's Bourbon Night turned up. And they turned up just as we were passing the quake around with, full of uh, Eagle Rare, I think we filled it with, and we were passing a quake around to have this kind of shared toast. And they walked in to toast the idea that there are no strangers in whiskey. So that was all very, very cool. And that went on for a little while until it kind of naturally just wound down and we were able to go back to the hotel and get a wee bit of rest before we went off that evening to meet Daniel and Rex. But of course we had to fit in a little time for some more out-of-state whiskey shopping. Now Daniel and Rex were super gracious, super welcoming and I have to say super generous. And I'm not just super generous on this event. I need to point out that Daniel and Rex are patrons of this channel. I mean, under normal scenarios you would imagine that channels would kind of compete with each other and things. But it's whiskey, so we don't. We support each other, and that kind of dynamic is really, really special. Anyway, they were generous as well that evening. They'd laid on drinks for us, they'd laid on food for us, they'd laid on this kind of patio reception area for us. There were friends of theirs there, there were some distillers there, the Pritchards were there, obviously Daniel and Rex himself. We got to try some really cool food, we got to try some nice bourbons. And it was the four uh, YouTube channels, the guest channels coming together with Daniel and Rex. So we're all just kind of hanging out and chatting and things. And it was, again, just very familiar. There was that feeling that, yeah, we're meeting for the first time but there was, we all already kind of knew each other. There was a lot of things that didn't need to be said. So already at this point, we're all super, super happy. We're having a fantastic day. We get back to the hotel and we're just ready to go into our rooms and kind of call it a night. And Bart's key doesn't work. He has to go down into the reception area. And he arrives in this reception area and he calls us on the phone and he said, you guys have to get down here now. What had happened is that Chad and Sarah are checking in as Bart arrives and they all arrive in this lobby that's full of whiskey people, full of whiskey people that have brought lots and lots of bottles of whiskey to share in this kind of impromptu tasting, this, this event in the hotel. 
And they, they received this fantastic welcome from all these guys. Bart got on the phone for us to go down. And we Scott and I went down and got to hang out with all of these whiskey people. And it was just superb. I walked to the bar. It was probably about three deep of people just kind of choosing what kind of whiskey they would have from an amazing selection of whiskey. And this guy, Ben, you star, he reached his hand over the crowd from behind the bar producing a bottle of Longhorn 16 saying, Roy, I know exactly which whiskey you'd like to taste. And, th and that's amazing to me because he knew who I was. He didn't need to kind of be introduced to, that. yeah, I'm Roy and, and things like that. He knew who I was, but he also knew exactly what dram I might enjoy at that point. It's just awesome. So kind of after winding down from that lobby event, um, and we weren't in bed too late because obviously the, the main event was that next day. And the main event itself was kind of cool. We got up and, and, and took a, a, a took our time in the morning and just kind of building up to things. We got there nice and early so that we could set up and we wanted to make sure we had space um, at our table that was laid on for us, for our time slots, and also have space for live streaming and things like that. But we walk into this environment, this Tuscan Hall that's part of the Wizard Academy campus there. It, it really needs to be seen to be believed how amazing this place is. And they've got this big event space that's full of all the Texas whiskey distilleries. And then there's a table set up for the YouTube channels as well to share throughout the day. Um, and then we go outside and Daniel and Rick stand up and they do this really kind of cool, um, welcoming, kind of formal but very informal if that makes sense. So they're standing up and they're welcoming everybody and giving everyone the shape of the day and things and, and a, in a very cool way and then say, let's go, let's go and enjoy the day. And throughout the day we have four hours of uncapped, unlimited whiskey drinking for everybody. And despite that, Nobody is out of order, there's no crosswords, there's only happiness and celebration and community and connectedness. It's just a fantastic energy and vibe to the whole event. And again, I think that that's whiskey, definitely. I find that at whiskey events anyway. But I think that kind of familiarity there of people knowing people already kind of helped that. It, it meant that when you were, when, when somebody was approaching you, they, they already knew who they were and they were just coming up and they were, they were saying hello. And, and that, that dynamic is, is really quite special. And I think it's very, very special to YouTube, which is why I was so excited about it all. Anyway, the event was fantastic. It really was good. You saw the live streams from the event. Hopefully you're going to see lots of content from other channels, just giving you summaries and snippets and little clips of videos and things. Now, as everything winds down, we've been invited back to the vault, back to the, the academy itself. Um, and, and this, we've seen this on video, we've seen clips of it and things, but it looks almost unreal. And when you're there, you realise how real this, all of this academy, all of this campus actually is and, and how cool it is and how much consideration has been, has gone into designing that form for that function, it, it's quite amazing to behold. Everything you see, everything you touch, everything that exists is there with a very specific purpose and has been placed there with thought. You feel like there's going to be a story behind every single little Easter egg, every little piece that's there. Just to give you an example, as you walk up to the tower, there's this kind of um, walkway that feels as if it's been carved right out of the bedrock. And as you walk into the main door of the tower, as you look up at it, and it's really quite an intimidating, tall building. It's, it's, it's quite a thing to see. But as you walk up, there's a plaque in the ground. And this plaque has the lyrics of one of my favorite songs on it. It's The Impossible Dream, and the, the version I like is Matt Monroe's version. And the lyrics of this talking about the unreachable star and the impossible dream and everything is here alongside two footprints. And you can imagine that it's been placed there by somebody who feels that, that in moments of, of where they need inspiration or that extra injection of energy, that's what they need to remember, that concept, that they're only limited by their imagination. They're only limited by their their own belief, that everything they've ever dreamed of is just on the other side of fear. You feel like somebody, perhaps Daniel, has put it there for that reason, and it just, in that environment, 
that makes perfect sense. Anyway, you go into the tower itself and this fantastic reception area, you walk up the stairs through the dining and events area as well and on into the academy itself where there's got this huge, very well appointed learning space. I mean, awesome to see with a big, huge presentation screen and, 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 and this kind of balcony mezzanine area up above it. And this, this balcony, this mezzanine area is kind of lined with bookcases. And through this wall, through these bookcases, we have the vault itself. And this isn't a, a movie set. This isn't a set that's been built for YouTube or anything. This is a whiskey vault. What you see actually exists and functions as a vault. And we were able to go in there and just have anything we wanted from that vault. The only caveat was that it had to be poured by a song. That was a nice kind of wind down to the event and you could feel the energy especially probably from Daniel and Rex as they were as they were reflecting on the day and realizing that it had been a success and that everybody was super happy and you could tell that they were just starting to relax and wind down a little bit. So we were able to share some really nice whiskies before jumping in the car and heading back to the hotel. And of course, what happened when we headed back to the hotel? Of course, the same thing again, that impromptu bar, that gathering of people had got together in the hotel with their whiskies that they'd brought along and we got to meet some more new people and then re-meet the people that we'd met throughout that day and the night before again. Just a really, really good positive energy to everything. I think to summarise the whole event, I think everybody got a huge buzz out of, out of meeting and feeling that connectedness and feeling that sense of community that whiskey brings. And, and people realised that what, what had happened is this, this virtual world had kind of been slammed together super successfully with the real world for that event. And we could all enjoy it and realise that that as this community builds and as this thing builds, there's going to be more opportunities for people to get together and do this. For example, the Scotch Test Dummies have their gathering coming up in October and I just wish that I could make it to that, but unfortunately it doesn't look like I can right now. But awesome, awesome opportunities like that would just be kind of more common. And I think the Vault and, and the, the Whiskey Tribe channel together, they've captured this, this zeitgeist, this energy, and they've shown that when people make creative, enjoyable, good quality content, that they will attract an audience. And, you know, we nobody had any idea that there was that big an audience on YouTube already, but there is, and it's building by the thousands by the day. It's, it's growing very, very fast. And I think it's a very good community. And I think one of the reasons it's a good community is because of the fact that it's been shared through video. So that familiarity is, is there. You know, the isolation has been broken down a wee bit and it's much more of a connected people thing. So there's not much else for me to say other than throw out a couple of thanks and just to say thank you to Daniel and Rex especially, just, just for being so gracious and welcoming and, and very, very generous as well. Generous to us, generous with their time and just generous in general. There was a feeling of, um, to give you an example, this Eleanor Bourbon that's gone out there, there's a clamour for this. People really want this. People all over the world want this. And it's going to be difficult to get because you physically have to go to the distillery to get it. I reserved mine online and I picked it up when I was there. They're putting this out. This is a 57.3%, 57.3% cast strength bourbon whiskey and they're putting it out at $50. Now, they could have been cynical about that and made a lot more money out of it, but that's not what it was about for them. It was about getting their whiskey, their ideas, their concepts out and sharing it with the community and making it as accessible to as many as they could given the legal guidelines that were forced to work inside in terms of distribution. So you get that sense that, 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 that they are very much, they know that they're about the community, they know that they're founded, their foundation is very firmly rooted in that community of the tribe and the magnificent bastards and everything. And, and everybody feels part of it, which is absolutely key. 
But I'd also like to thank Deb and especially Emma and Tommy and Joe and even Felipe and everybody, all of the team there at the Academy because they've got such a fantastic enterprise going on there. And it's just great to be there and witness what you're seeing on YouTube is not invented, but it's very, very tangible and real. But I think the biggest thanks should probably go out to First Whiskey. Because whiskey is what it's all about. Whiskey is at the core of everything that we do here. And it proves time and time again what a fantastic glue it is, what a fantastic catalyst it is for great opportunities and ideas. And for that connectedness and that bringing people together, it's, it's just a fantastic phenomenon to witness. But of course, the biggest thanks has to go out to the people that actually made the event. And that is the Whiskey Tribe, that's the Magnificent Bastards themselves, who turned up and just just had an absolute blast, just reveled in that sense of community, that sense of fellowship or partnership or, or, or connectedness, whatever you want to call it. But everybody got something out of that because everybody put something into that. And even after four hours of unlimited, uncapped drinking, they stayed magnificent from the beginning right through to the very end. So in order to raise a glass to all of you guys, I'm not going to open this Eleanor just yet because there's a lot of people that I know that are desperate to try this and find out what it's all about and there will be a fantastic moment for me to open and share this whiskey soon. I'm going to pour the best ever bourbon whiskey that the Scotch Test Dummies have ever tried. According to them, this is Scott's bottle. He gave this to me. This is his last few precious drops. And we shared this when I was over there and he gave it to me to take home. This is the 2015 BTAC Stag, what he calls his best ever bourbon. It even says best ever here. This is 69.1% and I tried it over there and it is truly, truly wonderful. So I'll pour the last few drops of this very precious juice. And I'll raise a glass to the Whiskey Vault, to the Whiskey Tribe, to Rex, to Daniel, and to every one of you magnificent bastards, to Chad, to Sarah, to Bill, to Scott, Bart, to everyone. What a wonderful thing to be involved in. A privilege. Slanchevar. Oh.